Hello everybody, you're watching another episode of Fence Miss International. So I'm doing another vlog on this show, the movies that they're doing on CNN. So I think this one I'm going to actually do in two parts because uh, there's, there's a lot more I want to cover uh, than there was last time. I only did the, the ep episode, last episode was talking about the 90s, I only did the did that episode in one part, so uh, I, I, I feel like I should note uh, that by the time that I, that I upload this video, that the, the episode would have aired already, of course, so the, uh, if you, um, so, um, if you want to watch the episode, now, of course, CNN has been uh, repeating the episode often, so if you, if you have seen it, you could check their schedule and see. Uh, when the episodes might, might be on again, uh, but it's probably on their website too. And especially if you don't have seen any, you and you want to watch these episodes, yeah, you can definitely go to their website uh, maybe and watch them on there. So with that said, I'll jump right in. So this was dealing with the 2000s up to today. So in the 2000s. Uh, Early on, we start seeing a, a lot of movies that are more star-driven than they are character-driven, and even character-driven. That's not saying that the, they're not uh, really good characters, too. But, but the actor is the is the main force carrying the film and the main selling point. You have R Russell Crowe stars in The Gladiator in 2000, directed by Ridley Scott, and she also stars in A Beautiful Mind, 2001, directed by Ron Howard. And Russell Crowe is a very good character actor. He's always the lead, typically, in the movies he's in. But he always dives deeply into the character that he is playing. Of course, we get Ocean's Eleven, 2002, directed by Steven Soderbergh, and starring George Clooney, Matt Damon, and Julia Roberts, etc., an and all-star cast. T 2001, we get Training Day, directed by Anchuan Fukua. I'm, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. I apologize. Starring Denzel Washington. And I bl believe that's the film he wins his, his second Oscar for. In 2000, we get Castaway, directed by Robert Zemeckis and starring Tom Hanks. 2002, Minority Four, directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Tom Cruise. And in 2006, the Departed, directed by Mark Scorsese, and starring an all-star cast, consisting of Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, Jack Nicholson, Mark Wahlberg, Alec Baldwin, and Anthony Anderson, just to name a few. And we also get some interesting romantic genres. Before we had, you know, um, Romantic movies were more comedic. We have some some here though coming out that are a bit more serious, including Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind in 2004, starring Jim Carrey, who's actually trying to break Kyle Carson and trying to do a more serious role. Uh, Elijah Wood was also in the movie as well. And one of the things that separates it from a lot of other romantic movies is their love story is more tragic, like Romeo and Juliet. So, well, no, yeah, that's, that's basically the, all I say there. That without spoiling too much of that movie, I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, in 2005 we got Brokeback Mountain. Oh yeah, Curse of the I was directed by Michelle Gondry. I didn't want to mention that too. Though, of course, 2005 we get Brokeback Mountain directed by Amy Lee, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger, and it's the first ever romantic movie to feature a same sex couple so it's kind of groundbreaking in that sense and then we we start seeing uh, c kind of with that we start seeing movies that that are more d director driven because I, I, I Lee was was a major because the actors gave really major performances too though, but Aina Lee was actually a major direction force driving force excuse me what I meant to say of that, uh, of that film so we see movies that are more director driven. Again, you have uh, certain directors that are putting their own stamp on movies, uh, and we see that with movies like uh, *Leaking* in 2012, directed by Steven Spielberg, 
starring Daniel Day Lewis. No Country for Older Men, 2007, directed by Joe and Ethan Cohen, the Cohen brothers, and starring. Uh, and also, their cast including Josh Bowen, Tom Willie Jones, and Woody Harrelson. 2007, we get There Will Be Blood, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, and starring once again Daniel Day Lewis. 2010, The Black Swan, directed by Darren Aronofsky, and starring Natalie Portman, <coughs> Mila Kunis. 2008, Stumbug Millionaire, directed by Danny Boyle, and starring Dev Patel, Frida Pinto, and Irfan Khan. So we, we, we get movies that are more director driven again, and we have. Movies that, of course, are kind of such a political feature and uh, cultural issues. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, alleged African American movie to be get twelve years of life in twenty twelve, directed by Steve McQueen, followed by Selma twenty fourteen, directed by Ava DuVernay, Straight Outta Compton twenty fifteen, directed by F. Murray Abram or Abraham, excuse me, and. We have directors like Ryan Coogler, who ends up becoming a major d director the, in the African American community. So he directs Football Station in 2012, which, of course, it, and of course, it's more of a budget drama that's that's uh, dealing with the, you know a lot that goes on in African American neighborhoods and, and, com and communities, and and um. Not the guy that touched blue glass, but though, but then uh, he kind of moves up the ladder though, and he, he says, you know, of course, he, he says he's gonna make a Rocky movie, so he makes Creed in 2015, and uh, so, so it, 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 it still has the same elements, of course. Um, the UC Station, it's still, it's, it's, it's still heavily. It's still heavily an African American movie, though, but it's, but it, but it's, it's more of a blockbuster with the, you know, with those uh, social, political, cultural, dramatic elements in it, and then he takes it like a whole other step further by making the Black Panther like a, like a major blockbuster superhero movie, movie, and kind of groundbreaking in its sense because it's like the first ever superhero movie to, to feature. A predominantly African American cast, not just one African American superhero, but the whole cast. And you know, it's it's also groundbreaking in the sense that that it's a movie that features a predominantly African American class. It's not really really dealing with you know um, the their their, stru their struggles because uh, it, 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 it just a regular movie, even though it deals with with, with people around them having. Having struggles, though, that, you know, you you see where they they see other people, whatever neighborhoods, you know, that that have that have struggles and and they they're kind of faced with that, and but uh, but the show has been very wealthy. Wakanda the show has been very wealthy and and rich country, though. So yeah, so yeah, it's it's different, and you and of course it's. It's culturally diverse. With, with that film, you see films becoming more culturally diverse, and people come to see it like in, in, in big numbers, of course. For those very reasons, of course, we also get films like. Birdman, directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritti. We get Gravity, directed by Alfonso Cuaron. The Shape of Water, directed by Guillermo del Toro. And we even get a, a horror movie that ends up becoming an Oscar nominated movie that is dealing with African American culture and the social political cultural element. Uh, a mix to it, and it's it's very much a drama, and it's very compelling, and it's directed by a comedian of, of all things, Get Out, 2017, directed by Jordan Bell, so so that's interesting too. But so so these directors he, here kind of end, end up being a major driving force 
for storytelling in Hollywood and moving us forward in storytelling because what's neat about so many of these films is even though a lot of them are more lower budget and uh, don't necessarily feature they feature some, some very good visuals they're the very good visual and feature be special effects but they don't necessarily feature the, the most grandiose special effects in the world but with that said uh, a lot of these movies are kind of the worst thing on on the big screen though because they they, they really are an experience when you are so uh, I think that's a good place to actually stop with part one so with that said uh, as always feel free to like comment and subscribe and stick around for part two and good day everybody